Today, we're going to talk about a movie called The Cure, made in 2017. This is an Irish movie. It's a movie that was made on a, on a shoestring budget with by a first-time director whose name is David Frame. Again, apologies if I'm not pronouncing that name correctly. It has uh, Elliot Page in it, and um, the other actors are at least relatively unknown. Um, what did you think about this movie, Scott? I love this movie. And Synthal, I'll tell you why I love this movie. I like horror movies that go outside of this. Now, I will say to you, I had to go back and look to see on the date when this film was released because I, I went, holy cow, what a great way to talk about what we just went through with the pandemic, right? Absolutely. This was prophetic. This was it like was. habit. This was done beforehand. Now, what was genius about this film, Synthal, was you took this from the idea that there is a zombie infection that takes place. The zombies remember what they had. So not only are they aware of what, they're, what they have done, but they actually find a cure that cures 75% of them, but they still have traits of pack hunting and everything else like that. And it becomes this us against them. I mean, really the pandemic masks, non-mask, I would say, you know, the current Roe versus Wade stuff that is happening. What an incredibly well done film to look at it from a different perspective. Absolutely. That's what I really liked about this. This is another example of, what can you do with very little money? This is creative writing. Uh, the approach that you took, like you said, of, of a zombie cure that, that isn't a full cure. And you've got members in your society who are formally murdering and killing people and remember everything. How, do, how does yes. the rest of society react to them? More importantly, what do you do with those who couldn't be cured? Uh, it was it was a really fascinating spin um, that spin the writing on it and the fact that it uses very little effects, any kind of effects, um, made it a really powerful statement. I thought that the creativity is what really sold it for me. Um, what didn't work for you in this movie, Scott? You know, I... Synthal, and that's another, that's a great question, but this was one of those films that I just thought everything kind of clicked together very well for me. I, I, you know, you're seeing this story as it's developing, right? So the character is cured. The character isn't allowed to go back to, you know, regular life. He has to move in with his, with his uh, uh, sister-in-law yep. in his house. So she is now in his house, right? And he's having to move back in. And she has a son and she wants to love him like he used to be, but she also fears for her own son, just it's, but doesn't want to show him. Um, I, I actually looking at this film, simple, it's very difficult for me to find a piece in here that I would go, wow, if only they had done this. The only thing I would say is, and, and again, this isn't a bad thing. Don't take this the wrong way. The ending was just left, right? So, yep. you know, it's a news report. Uh, you know, we hear that they're, the infection is still out there, even though they think that they've contained it. It's still spreading. Just like, I, again, I come back to COVID. Oh, we've got to contain. Whoops, we've got to break out over here. And it leaves with this. Now, what's what's interesting to me about that is, is that I started reading that there is they are looking to do The Cured 2. Wow. So doing a sequel to this, which makes sense to me with the way that they left uh, the opening that the challenge I have with an opening like that, it does leave it to you feeling like there should be a sequel. And if they never come around to having a sequel, you kind of feel like you got, you know, it got left hanging. I kind of felt the same thing that this had the Stephen King effect, a really fantastic idea. And uh, with all fantastic ideas, the difficulty is how to close it and how mm -hmm. to finish it. And it didn't quite work. The character development, the very complex nuances of, how the characters related to each other, not just how society reacts to the cured and how society reacts to those who couldn't be cured, but how the individuals within that society are reacting to each other really well developed. The things that didn't work for me, in addition to the fact that ending kind of fizzled out were that um, I think it had a little bit more traditional zombie action scenes near the end. I think they could have yeah. tuned back a little bit because it, it really wasn't needed. The story and the character interaction and the responses to each other and all the horrific events I've been through, really what drove the story for me. And I didn't need 
a lot of the action sequences in the very end. I know what they're trying to accomplish, but I have felt the same way. This is a first time director and he's shown outstanding creativity with the story. And this is another example of, can you do a great horror movie? Can you do a great film with a very little money? You can with some great performances and some very unique different storylines. So I think what really worked for this director was, a, was his ability to get Elliot Page uh, to join the cast. He really added to this uh, film. Um, when you look at his, the scenes, it really plays into it. The interaction with his child, um, I... I love that, right? It, it built the suspense. It built into that. I, so, since the one thing I did see in this, uh, going backwards a little bit, uh, also to the, you know, that I, I, that I wasn't a big fan of the ending. Although, again, that's just a small thing. Uh, what was the movie with Will Smith that had the zombie? I, uh, uh, I am legend. I am legend. So, a lot of the traits that these zombies were showing had a lot of I am legend, you know, the heavy breathing, the leaning yeah. into each other, the, the, the pack thing. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Um, I, you know, there's only so many ways you can play zombies. Right. There's only so many ways. But there, there were certain scenes in there that I just kind of went, I think I saw that in I am legend, you know, the leaning into each other. That being said, the idea of pack hunting in zo with zombies is fascinating to me because uh, Stephen King did it in The Cell. Uh, you see it happening in uh, like um, 21 days or 28 days later. Yep. And, and that idea, the, what, I, what I loved about this was the idea that you actually physically, and I had actually started writing a book like this a while ago, which was you're aware the entire time that you are infected and you are doing these horrible things to people, but you have no control of it. Yep. What I thought was fascinating here, Synthel, and I'm sorry, because I kind of, this is, this is amazing to me, was that. He played in the idea that they enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. They liked being in that state. Absolutely. Both. It wasn't just the alpha character, but clearly the, his partner there. Um, they, they felt bad about the fact that they enjoyed what they did and they, um, and they remembered it. So when they transitioned back to being human, you have all these horrific nightmares and, um, and guilt for most of the members of the character, not all of them, and so that reaction, I thought, yeah, absolutely, the, the fact that they were able to get Elliot in this. And uh, uh, what was really fascinating is I have to wonder, did this feel like a small budget movie to you? And if so, what about it either felt like a small budget movie or, or how did the director exceed that small budget look and feel? I, so to me, it didn't feel like a small budget at film all. at all. And I kept trying to find little areas that, uh, you know, oops, there we are. Oops, there we are. The it was spread out. I mean, so it was multiple locations. So it wasn't yeah. filmed in just like uh, a, a movie we recently did, The Attack of the Giant Blurry Finger, which is all within a few rooms inside of an apartment. Um, this is this is different locations, lots of characters. Um, I, it did not feel uh, micro or low budget to me at all. No, it didn't to me either. The performances were so convincing. The camera work, the direct directing um was really fantastic i never got the impression that this was a low budget movie i think this could have had a theatrical release i know it did and uh didn't do too well but i you know absolutely I, there's nothing about this movie that i felt oh this is in the same category of small budget movies low budget movies have been looking at so absolutely fantastic job by the director uh, what did you take out of this that you think we can leverage for the movie that we're going to be working on i come back to the uh use of sets i uh, you know we keep talking about you know that we're going to do this film that's set in one room yeah i, I there is something magical about the camera moving between that you're going to different areas right so to me a, a movie that is set inside of one room, there is no room for error, right? So yes. it, you, you're you trying to film everything. So your lighting has to be just right. You got to make sure that the that the clock on the wall is saying, you know, you know when you go, you know, action, it, that clock, because people see stuff like that, right? They do. You, you can't make mistakes in a one room shot. But not only that, but the, the writing. I think that's what really I took away from this. Not just is there a cure for, for the zombie virus, but there are those that couldn't be cured. And how does society react to both categories of, of people? 
it's possible for us too to make a very compelling movie with little to no budget and some creativity and thought to like you said how we frame the shots and how we light the shots and and how we film it so simple i, I it, as a last note one thing that i i thought about this film i don't know if you remember or not we uh watched a movie a while ago called antebellum right yes. which, which was a talk you know about slavery yep. and that it was actually taking place today right in this in confederate you know like a like a theme park yep this film to me although there was very little uh, diversity in this film, very little, made a very strong statement about diversity, right? Which was the us against them, the why they don't belong here, uh, we don't trust them, um, they're here to kill us, it doesn't matter if they're cured. I thought this was a very strong message on equity and diversity in a film that had nothing to do with equity and diversity, although it had everything to do with equity and diversity, right? Which is, and again, from this pandemic, and that's why I keep coming back to what, what genius filming to have, this has happened right before. And I actually think if this was re-released today, it would have a better, I think it would have a bigger audience. Simple. I think it would do well, considering it was made in 2017 and it, it's very, very fitting for our times today. And a social statement, whether he intentionally made them or not, uh, really appropriate for all the things that are happening around us today. So yeah, I would, you know, these this is a movie that uh, that if it got re-released today, I, I absolutely, I think the the quality of the movie, the fact that it doesn't feel small budget, um, would do really well. And this is something that was compelling enough. I would see in the big theater. I, I would yes. go to the cinema theater to watch this. And there are not a lot of small budget movies we make that statement about, but I would absolutely see this. Um, you know, this kind of had another similar vibes. Remember, uh, what was it called? Children of Men? Yes, yes, very much so. Yeah, very similar vibes. And Children of Men was a higher budget movie. It had higher production values, but very similar concept. This is taking a similar concept, similar vibe, and doing it on a very low budget. Um, so look forward to seeing more from this director. Loved it. Yep, I did too. I would highly recommend this. So if you've got uh, some time uh, to watch, I, this is a film to put on your list if you're looking for a micro budget film uh, that is very well done, that has great casting, that has really uh, well thought out sets. I'm with you, Synthal. This is a recommendation. 